inevitable? Local fears were borne out in 2008 when residents discovered that gas had leaked from a well in Dimmock, Pennsylvania, contaminating the water supply of 14 families. The company that drilled the leaking well was also cited for spilling frac fluids into area streams. The incidents were a wake-up call for the industry and the state. We have had gas migrate. We have had problems at the surface with spills of frac fluids. And some of those spills have contaminated uh, some uh, people's wells and have contaminated uh, some streams causing small fish kills. And in 2010, when drilling activities inadvertently dislodged pockets of methane gas miles from the actual drilling site, the state and the company involved worked swiftly to close the leaks and to keep similar problems from happening again. I believe strongly that we can, in fact, produce this gas and protect our water. Some companies have been very helpful in stressing what needs to be improved. And then there have been some that have not really operated in a manner that's acceptable. The industry just has to get to a point where it's drilling quality wells every time. Despite the efforts of many companies to make safety their top priority, many residents believe all gas men are rapacious and irresponsible. Those folks around here are skeptical. And quite frankly, I can't blame them because we are often judged by the least among us. We take great measures in every step of the process to ensure not just groundwater, but soil, wildlife habitat, and the community that we're being a responsible operator and, and we're doing right. But environmentalists are especially concerned that even inadvertent spills of drilling and frac fluids will compromise the Susquehanna River and its many streams and tributaries. Not only is the river a haven for wildlife and water sports, it's an important source of the state's drinking water. David Buck is a river tour outfitter who knows every inch of this section of river and is very sensitive to anything that could affect it. You have enough of this frac fluid in trucks that's traveling around. You know, all you need to do is have a truck break open in an accident into a stream, and you know, we could lose some, some of our important environment. And with so much water being drawn from the river to do the fracking, Buck has been on the lookout for drops in water levels. Uh, there's you know, a number of water extraction places, not only on the river, but they're on the small streams. But to see any actual change, I'm gonna say no. One of the reasons water levels have remained satisfactory has been the strict withdrawal limits set by the state. Two years ago, we required Marcellus shale drillers to file a water plan with the state agency. And we did that, actually, because we did have companies withdrawing water from streams that couldn't tolerate the withdrawal. But since we put that in place, we've had very little problems uh, with water withdrawals. Although most of the water used in fracking stays deep below ground, some comes back to the surface and is collected in tanks. And it's this water that triggers the most concern. That water is laced with a mix of chemicals, some of which are toxic. How's it going? And about 20 to 25 percent of that comes back in the fracking process. So there's concerns in terms of how you safely dispose of the wastewater. The state is now encouraging companies to disclose the chemicals they use for fracking, and several have begun to do so. Stronger regulations on the transport, storage, and treatment of drilling fluids have greatly reduced the potential for contamination. And some companies are rethinking their entire water use process. We're now recycling 100% of our wastewater, um, which has tremendous benefits. It completely eliminates the need to dispose of wastewater. And another huge benefit is it reduces the amount of fresh water that we use. 
By reusing its frac water, this company is saving itself, the river, and area streams 20% of the water it used to take. State regulations have so far helped limit impacts to minor spills and gas leaks, but no industrial operation at this scale will ever be totally problem-free. Well sites are required to have several layers of protective lining so drilling fluids can't seep into the soil. And many companies also create a raised berm to keep larger spills from flowing beyond the pad. But are safeguards like these enough to build community trust of the gas companies? Dan and Gail Hirschberger have raised cows and farmed the land for as long as they can remember. We grew up as farmers, I mean, uh, we, we, so we've seen the ups and downs of farming, and we've been, been there. Uh, They've been down. A couple of years ago, they scraped together enough money to buy a second farm in Bradford County when a gas company began calling. We get this phone call and says, oh, hey, we're gonna drill on your farm. I mean, okay, that's nice, I didn't know anything about it. We're dairy farmers, okay, we know about dairy farm, we know about raising corn. At first we thought, oh, well, that's nice, but it probably won't amount to too much. In no time, the company had drilled and fracked a well that's now in production, and in the process, gave the Hirschbergers a first-hand look at their operational and safety practices. You know, I'm not an expert, but, but from what I understand and what I've seen, I mean, they're very concerned about what kind of, what kind of footprint they're going to put on this, the neighborhood. We've been quite impressed, quite frankly. And the more we learn about it, I feel better about it all the time. We haven't seen any money yet. <laughs> we're we, uh, expecting them soon. Though. We're expecting yeah. them soon, oh, yeah. <laughs> While the Hirschbergers wait for royalties, Bill Wilson leads a group of local residents who came together when gas company representatives first approached them to buy the mineral leases to their land. But honest to God, the, the one land man that was, was leasing early on, wheels and deals, he was, in fact, a used car salesman and had a lot. <laughs> Although excited by the prospect of found money, most residents felt boxed in and confused by the offers. We knew that the companies were way out in front as far as we were concerned that when they came to our front doors, you know, they had decades of, of information and we had 15 seconds worth. Some residents signed early and at low prices, while others, like Bill Wilson, held out and he convinced his friends to join him. So I just went around to a few of the neighbors that were in that position and said, why don't we just hold off a little bit and see what this is all about. Why are they here? You know, somebody's going to give you something for nothing. Chances are, they're not. As word of mouth spread, more and more residents joined the group. Within probably three or four months, we had uh, about uh, 1,200 people with about 48,000 acres. Bill negotiated for us, and he didn't ask for anything. And... Um, Shows you how smart I was. <laughs> Wilson won strong environmental protections and the region's highest prices for gas leases, over $5,000 per acre. We had people at the lease signings with tears in their eyes saying, you know, it afforded them an opportunity. They didn't have to worry about being a burden to their kids. One lady and never had as much money in her hand at one time through her whole life is what she got paid for the, for the gas lease. Today, many individuals in this room are more financially comfortable than they've ever been. And state and local governments may soon benefit as well. Good afternoon and welcome. I would first like to thank Governor Rundell for coming to our beautiful county. We have to enact this tax, it has to be enacted in the proper form. And the proper form means taking care of the needs of county and local government. And the proper form means... In the near future, Pennsylvania may approve a tax on all gas produced in the state, which could bring hundreds of millions in much needed revenue. And local communities like this one in Tawanda 
are hoping for a share of that revenue to help repair roads and infrastructure now crumbling from overuse. You know, the traffic has tripled. I never had the huge trucks all the time. In some places, it's just totally deteriorated because they're not used to having the amount of traffic. And on country roads, the big trucks can be dangerous. I mean, I think they have about a truck accident a week. Companies are now helping to pay for road repairs. And overall, the new industry has been good for local businesses. Oh, I think there is going to be a lot of jobs, because for the long-term jobs, they're trying to hire and train local people from the area. I don't think people realize where we would have been right now if they hadn't come when they did. It really concerns me right now with this pipeline. But some residents worry about the loss of quiet right country life and want their land to remain unharmed. Our primary interest was to protect the environment because to us that meant more than any amount of money they could pay us. One day, all the drilling noise and big trucks will be gone. But this corner of America will be supplying an important energy resource to the entire nation. As a fuel, natural gas offers us really a world-class solution to a lot of the things we're debating about, our energy use, foreign or domestic, um, our climate concerns about carbon emissions, and it's American. Um, it's here right under our feet. It is a national policy to wean ourselves from the dependence on foreign oil, and natural gas can contribute to that as well. But will a win for the nation bring too many losses for the land and lifestyle of rural Pennsylvania? Natural gas is such an enormous opportunity that we all have a responsibility to develop it properly. And we need some help. We need to set standards. But this is not a situation where the government has unlimited ability. At the end of the day, we're not going to be on these well sites 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Which means it's up to the citizens of shale country to make sure things are done right. They've got big eyes watching them, so they need to make sure that they're doing the right thing. There's a lot of citizen groups that, you know, they will, on a heartbeat, be on the internet sending to everybody what's going on with the area, what's happening. People work together. Hopefully we can keep this area from being a crap heap. They should just act responsible. Come up here, do the right thing. Many of the gas men are themselves citizens of shale country and want the same quality of life as their neighbors. I've grown up along the Susquehanna my whole life. I have a water well outside the back door here that provides water for my wife and kids. I love the community, I love the people. I love our mountains and our rivers and our streams. I hunt, I fish, I want my kids to be raised here. And this is God's country, it's beautiful. Yes, we will have some negative effects to it, but um, if we work together and get people educated and try to hold people to doing things right, I believe that we're gonna continue to keep our beautiful land and our quaint towns. The larger picture of this is good. <laughs> Let's work together as a team. DVDs of Shale Gas and America's Future are available from American Clean Skies Foundation. 751st Street Northeast, Suite 1100, Washington, D.C., 20002. Contact the Foundation to learn more about natural gas and the issues discussed in this film at www.cleanskies.org.